Online, this is uh, Valor Center. We're at 2260 Holly Springs Parkway, uh, right here in Holly Springs. We're right down the street from the Walmart off exit 14. And uh, we're going to have a great time today. So let's go to the Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this is the day that you have made. And we thank you for the beautiful weather. We thank you that your presence is among us. We thank you. Uh, for alerting us today to your goodness. We thank you that the creation cries out how great you are, how, how wonderful you are. We're so glad to be here and we're so glad to, we're so glad to taste and smell the fragrance of the Lord and taste of your goodness this morning. So, so would you come Lord and, and bathe your people with your love, Lord? Would you show them your mercy? We thank you for deliverance today. We thank you for healing today. We thank you for salvation today. To bring people back to you away from their delusions. Set this world free of the delusions of the evil one, Lord. We pray for our younger generation, our youth. We ask you to capture them rather than let the enemy capture them. Capture them at a young age. Capture them while they're young so they can be used mightily part of saving the world, Lord, part of uh, that Salvation Army you're raising up in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, give our worship team a big hand and we're going to start.
You. Yeah. 
with beauty and splendor how much more will he clothe you if he watches over over every sparrow how much more does he love you if he dresses the lilies with his beauty and splendor
Yesterday, we were at, um, six or seven of us were passing out flyers to the area around the Day of Miracles, where that's going to be um, the fairgrounds. And then some of us broke off from that, and they were over at Ollie's, and a bunch of people were coming in there. And we met this this uh, young lady, Sonia, and her mother, Maria. Maria? And... Uh, she said she's fighting some weird kind of disease, cancer or something. But I told her God wants her to live and not die and see the goodness of the Lord of the land of the living. And uh, I told them where our church was. They showed up. They were here right before, right at 1030 or a little before. So I want to be a part of a miracle. We're going to give her this cloth. And because uh, God has not given up on you and God isn't mad at you and every lie that's been told about you that you're going to die and every every kind of false teaching that says you're supposed to die because so Jesus can come or the rapture can happen or whatever that's all a lie because God is the Lord of life amen Jesus didn't come to kill people he came to liberate people so I want to get I want a bunch of, I want our folks to come on up here we're going to pray over her if that's okay with you and I told you we would didn't I warn you Yes. Come on, Sonia. So, Sonia, I'm going to just put this on you right here. 
and uh, lay your hands on that. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. And I couldn't even pronounce what it was, Mom. But we know that cancer, uh, I, I believe these are all works of the devil, Jesus called them. And they're, they're, not, they're not supposed to be normal. And an 18-year-old girl should live and not die and not think about the end, but think about the beginning. So we just right now cancel every death assignment over Sonia in Jesus' name. We all agree with heaven right now for this young girl and her mother and for Maria. We declare right now, you will live and not die to see the goodness of the Lord, the land of the living. All cancer go. All lies go. All word curses spoken over you. Anointed ones be broken. In the name of Jesus, we break every word curse spoken over you. Every diagnostic word curse from a physician or from whatever lab work or whatever we, we we thank you that your report lord is better than the reports of men and we thank you that you're greater and we thank you you love doctors and you luke was a physician but lord you are the final answer and we just declare jesus be king we just declare life to come in our body to override every spirit of death and cancer and sickness and decay and mental torment go in the name of Jesus. Leave her. We command the manifestation of the goodness of God to come on her. We thank you for it. Lord, show yourself good. Jesus, swipe away this like you would erase uh, chalk letters on a chalkboard. Just You would just wipe them away. Wipe it away with the healing and the goodness. Your love, let your love saturate her right now. Love of God, come upon her. Fire of God, come upon her. We thank you for a good report. We thank you for a fantastic miracle. We thank you that you're the God of the miraculous, that you part the waters, that you raise the dead, that you liberate the living. And thank you that you've broken her from the principality of death and darkness and brought her into the heritage of the sons and daughters of light. We declare light over you. Let's just declare light. Light shine on you. Glory of God. Let your light shine in her heart right now in the name of Jesus. You And the Lord says, Sonia, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. You're beloved and you're forgiven. There's nothing you need to add that you can add to it. And forgive all those that have done wrong to you. Who have said wrong to you because the economy of the kingdom is forgiveness but the lord says he forgives you of all your sins and he's wiping them away and by his stripes that he took on the cross you are healed first peter 2 24 that's yours and we declare complete manifestation in your physical body every lie every Every barometer, every uh, cal everything that calculates the sickness, we just declare all of these targets and markers will disappear. We thank you for goodness. We thank you for the victory. And there are others that want to prophesy. Those that you have a prophetic word, yeah, uh, just speak it over her. Yesterday, while my brothers and sisters were out in the um, fields praying, I went into my prayer room and I prayed. And the Lord spoke to me and said, a young woman will be healed of cancer. So take hold of that. You have to know that he loves you, regardless of what the world tells you. No matter what, he's, no matter what the medical field says, you have to take that. And you have to go into your prayer room and you have to close the door. And you have to thank him every day for your healing, regardless of what the doctors say. Regardless of what they say, Mom, you have to put your hands on her and pray for her and thank God for her life because she has a, he has a plan and purpose for her. Yes. Okay? Live and not die. Thank the Lord every day. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. It doesn't matter. You have to believe that he is your healer yes. and that he loves you awesome. and every single thing that we could have ever done he paid for already yes. your sin has been removed Jesus. okay Amen. Who else? Yes. Uh, 
was just praying over and over and over. Just thank you, Lord, for opening up a uh, grace, opening up a space for her to receive yes. what you want to do, Amen. what you're doing thank for you, her. Jesus. And we just say, Father, in Jesus' name, that spirits of despair and hopelessness and um, all the darkness go and do not return. Thank you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. So what I saw was, I saw a toucan Sam, and the Lord said, it's one of those birds that's not like the eagle that flies up high, but it has a gift. And the Lord's given you a gift to sniff out things that the enemy has hidden to cause a stumbling block to others. He's also given you a voice. A, the, the sound of the toucan is for warning, and it often scares away predators that are even larger than itself. So you have a voice that the Lord has given you to repel the enemy, and he's also given you a gift of like um, a magnetic uh, personality. You draw people in with the words that you say. You have this gift to just get people to to just, you know, at first look, they just think you're just a regular girl, but then once you open your mouth, they're so drawn to you because of the heart that God has put in you. And he's said that he's declared today and you declare that he, you will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. From this day forward, you are stamped with the Holy Spirit. And every time you see the fruit, fruit loop toucan, remember what the Lord has said to you. Remember what the Lord has said to you. It's okay to be a fruit loop. As we were in worship, I heard Jesus came to me and said, uh, Josiah, okay, 2 Kings 22, okay, he did not, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed completely in the ways of his father, David, not turning aside to the, to the right or to the left. So we're in the middle of a storm right now, and this is not just for you two, but for the body of Christ, but to be steadfast in your faith. And Josiah is an example of uh, just being faithful. And uh, I would like to pray over you too, okay? In the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence, Lord. I pray for an overflow and a supernatural healing from head to toe, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I see a green plant right now. You like the word chlorophyll, don't you, in the name of Jesus. I see chlorophyll in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I use this chlorophyll, Lord, this plant, Lord, I ask for this supernatural yes. healing, Flourish. this medicine, Lord, this Live. this In this natural Jesus. heavenly ointment, Lord, I ask that you heal. Light. We heal this Light. this plant, Lord. I, I this represents you and your heart, your love for science too. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you give her supernatural healing, prolong her life, Lord. She yes, can be Lord. a scientist one day to help heal others, Lord. I ask that you. You use her as your weapon, yes. Lord, and intercede in the pharmaceutical uh, industry, Lord, in yes. the name of Jesus. Yes. I, anoint, I ask you to anoint her mind, her intelligence, her wit, yes. her creativity, her innovation, yes. Lord, and her love for life and people and animals and plants, Lord. I ask that you use her, take her through this wilderness, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and I ask for a spark spark in your glory, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for peace. God loves you too, sweetheart. God loves you too. In the name of Jesus, the Lord highlighted you as soon as you stepped into this building. The Lord highlighted you in the name of Jesus. I ask for peace and joy to fill you in the name of Jesus. I ask for any, any ailments here in the name of Jesus. I ask that to be released yes. now and to be healed in now in the name of Jesus. I ask for clearance. I ask for yes, in the name restoration. Of I ask for everything to be straightened out now in the name oh, of Jesus. Name of I Jesus. ask for increased circulation Thank now in the name of Jesus. I Thank pray for a mother's heart, Lord, for peace, Lord, for joy, Lord, for healing, Lord, for stability, Lord, and for faithfulness Jesus. to increase. I ask for praise, Lord, in the name of Jesus. This is a new generation move forward don't look back everything you came through you're you're a wonderful mother 
you didn't probably you didn't have the right examples, but you're in, you're setting a new example. Did you know that? Well, Holy Spirit knows that. Lord knows that. Did you know I wanted to be a saint? Oh, Holy Spirit knows that. Holy Spirit knows that. Holy Spirit knows that. God knows. He knows every detail. You are totally trapped today, sweetie. Okay, every detail. Happy Mother's Day. Every day is Mother's Day. You're a wonderful example. She might not be able to verbalize it, but she takes pride and joy in you. And you're, you're raising up a new generation. You might not have not had the great foundation example, but you're creating a new one. And you're strengthening her. And thank you for your strength. And thank you for an example and testimony for raising us a true saint. Okay. Lord, I bless you. Thank you, Jesus. She prayed that if I was in pain all my life and everything, yeah. that please let her go. And if she's not going to yeah. be in pain anymore, and if she's because no I had two heart surgeries when goes. I was two months old, and in the name of Jesus, in the name he of brought Jesus. me here. Jesus. Lord, I pray for increased strength, Lord, and the love. I love that no one can replace or take away. I increase this love and this bond, Lord. I bless and anoint and protect, Lord, Holy Spirit. I pray for supernatural strength, Lord. I know you guys have been exhausted, but I pray for increase and acceleration. And healing, Lord. And don't give up. Okay. In the name of Jesus. I pray for joy and peace and laughter and lots of baking yes. and lots of cooking. In, the name of In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Huh? Okay, and for you, Mar Maria, right? Yeah, so today's a new day for you because, you know, everything to a mother is about your kids, right? It's a big deal, but um, it's a big deal for you and all that religious shackles we were talking about yesterday. You know, delusions are not, not abnormal in the religious community and among the church and the people of God over the years. And some of them were proved right. They weren't delusional like Joan of Arc. She wasn't delusional. She was right. But what, when you put a, when a curse goes upon somebody of destruction, it's not right. God doesn't go around cursing because uh, the curse was already placed on us by sin, right? And the devil, and we're in a fallen world. So Jesus came to liberate us from all that. Jesus, I mean, he went to all this trouble. And so, so your theology got shifted. Your, the, what is truth? What is truth got shifted. And so I just declare right now, and there was a word about a bullet, a, a bullet going right into something and changing it, transforming it today back in the prayer room. So receive that because you don't have to be the same person that walked in here or even walked up to Ollie's or wherever, wherever it was yesterday. But uh, your girl will live. All this stuff is going to drop away. All of your junk is going to drop away. You're going to be shocked. I mean, the main thing is you're going to be so shocked. You're like, wow, this is really happening. But grab a hold of it. Agree with it. And you can't let go of this new alignment. You're aligning with the king in heaven now, right? Like he says, so my kingdom come on earth. So that's what you're aligning with. So Angela had something. And then we all got yes. to so, um, so I heard the Lord say, the enemy hangs you up on technicalities. And he said that the enemy is using your zeal that you have for the Lord against you. And it's keeping you trapped instead of giving you freedom. And he gave me this scripture in Galatians 5.1. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. The enemy's been trying to entangle you in bondage. And what he does is when you were a child, you had this carefree spirit about you where you thought anything was possible and something happened that it crushed it. 
and so it crushed it for you. So what I see you doing is I see you planting these beautiful white flowers every morning. And it's like rose moss. I don't know if you know what rose moss is, but you don't know what rose moss is in the story, in, in the picture that I'm seeing. And so every night the flower goes away and dies and you get upset and you ask the Lord, what have I done? And you pick up those plants that were planted that you planted that morning and you kill them. And rose moss come out when the sun comes out, and they go away when the sun goes away, and they get new bl blooms every day. All you have to do is pick off the dead heads. So every day you've been planting these new flowers, and every night you've been digging up what you've planted, and that's what the enemy's doing to hold you back, to keep you in bondage. But there's a freedom that he has for you. So look up the rose moss. See what it does. Remember that, and remember the Lord's freedom, because it's the Lord. He gives us the ability to partake, to plant, plant to water but he's the one that brings the growth as long as you don't dig it up and you give him place yeah. everything that you need in liberty is right there it's not about the church you go to it's not about the kind of bible you read it's not about the kinds of songs you sing it's about the freedom you have to trust yourself that you hear the holy spirit and don't let the words of a man or anybody else tell you otherwise because the Holy Spirit has shed his love abroad in your heart to know him and there's a freedom that comes with that and you need to just step into it. I just want to declare over you guys that you are uh, from this day forward you are pierced with beloved righteousness you are the beloved of the Father. Now, Jesus told a parable about the field, and the man went and found treasure, and he covered it up. Jesus is the man. You guys are the treasure. He doesn't, he doesn't, he didn't clean you off and dust you off. There's nothing you can do to make yourselves any more loved by him. You are totally loved, totally righteous, totally, he is enamored with you. I'm just learning some of this for myself, so I'm speaking out of my heart. There's nothing you can do to make him love you any more or any less. You are the treasure hidden in the field, and Jesus left it all. He left heaven. He left glory and splendor and came. God incarnate, God with us. Give it all for you, for you guys. owned me because I was bi and I had a girlfriend and I don't I want him back but I know he has mental illness and I'm probably not getting him back but I know he still loves me it's just not the same and I've been dealing with this cancer since 2014 and I'm finally feeling like it's going away by y'all and Jesus and God and everything. Yeah, Jesus wants to completely transform you. So everything you've been or were up into this moment until 24 hours ago will be unrecognizable a few weeks, a few months from now. So we just thank you for complete transformation. And her dad, we just declare, Lord, you're, you're a good father and you love fathers. And you want fathers restored to their kids. And we just declare my, Malachi uh, 6 will happen. That you'll, the, that you'll be restored. God's going to bring restoration, the fathers to the children. And all children stray. All children make mistakes. God's children have all fallen and sinned before the, uh, uh, before the glory of the Lord. But God's going to change your mind, change his mind, change your mother's mind. All of your minds, you know, don't stress. Just let him change you from the inside out and just roll with whatever he's, he's showing you. 
you know, you are not what others say you are. Just know this. What man says of you, what, only what God says of you is what's important. Even what your human father says of you, it, what's more important is what God says of you. And he loves you because he created you. But he created you for a specific purpose. And it can't be all, that can't be altered. You can't alter it. Other people can't alter it for you. You're dead. But we have to agree with that and roll with it. And a lot of things you thought were true aren't true. And God's going to, he's going to remove all falsity and lies and all that stuff. So you, I just want to confirm that, that scripture, it's, um, it also it repeats itself in Luke chapter 1, verse 17. I'm going to read it to you in the Amplified, okay? It says, and he, God will turn back the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient and the incredulous and the unpersuadable. Think about unpersuadable. God is, going to, God is above the unpersuadable, okay? To the wisdom of the upright, which is the knowledge and the holy love of the will of God, in order to make ready for the Lord a people perfectly prepared in spirit, adjusted and disposed and placed in the right moral state. In Jesus' name. That's what he's going to do. Now, I think Joel had a word, and we're going to end with this. Go ahead, Joel. Yes, when I was sitting down, even before we were starting to pray for you and come up, um, uh, war, W-A-R, and like we're in a battle. And it's a severe battle. We're all in it. You're not the only one, though. You're never alone. Every one of us here are in a battle, a big struggle. When you think of the word war, it's wisdom, in Christ, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Jesus Christ. You go with Jesus. Every moment, every hour, think of Jesus. Jesus is everything. So he is wisdom and revelation. He's, he's been revealed to all of us here. We're all on a journey here. We're, no, we're, we're learning a lot. You know, we're learning how to love and love each other and care for each other. And so, think of war, war, W-A-R, wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. We're in a battle. Until we go on to heaven, we're going to be in this battle, okay? Yeah. So, anyway, that's what I wanted to say. And I see this thing on your neck, and I declare, um, this sounds crazy, but the Lord wants to mark you. And if he marks you, men or women, your parents, really nobody can mark you like he can mark you. You're his. And that means he's going to fight over you. Does that make sense? Because God is a loving God. I mean, God loves his kids. You know what I mean? And I know, I mean, I, I heard a dad say the other day, if somebody else did what that lady just did to in front of my, to my kids, I would have gone after her with, you know. God will defend you. You know what I mean? He'll defend your honor. And I just break every mark of men over you and every label and every demonic label. Get off her in the name of Jesus. I declare right now you're marked for God. And I break every spirit of infirmity on her neck, every spirit of calamity, every spirit of death, premature death. We break the spirit of the occult. We break Baphomet. We break Jezebel. We break every lying devil over her that's, that's brought her to this place of de destruction and sickness. And we just declare liberation over Sonia today in every way, spirit, soul, and body, and mind. We declare a new mind mind for Sonia in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, everybody. This is wild, crazy stuff, but I don't know what we do after that. Have a seat, but you know, turn to one another and tell them Jesus is awesome. Okay, Renee, and another word for somebody else, I think. There's a gentleman here. Um, I don't know if you came with Han, yeah. um, yeah. but I saw you on the beach or by the pool in one of those lounge chairs, and I just saw the sun, S-O-N, coming down upon you. And I just feel like he wants you to enter into this place of rest before him, and he's just going to take away all anxiety, all just uh, fear, um, striving, you know, like trying, 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 
but you're just going to rest in him and he's going to empower you, recharge you. You know, when you come back from vacation, you're like, I feel great. And you're just going to have that energy and that, you know, that encouragement. And uh, that's what I saw over you. Awesome. It's Jay, right? I'm going to call you Jay. <laughs> yeah, so God's, so whatever your real name is. <laughs> Joseph. I know, but Je you have been called Jay by men, correct? Yes. Okay. The Lord wants today just one thing that I got out of this, and what I ran into you before I met you, I shook, I shook your hand. When I shook your hand, I feel like God is going to give you His name for you, just like he, he ran into Saul, but he became Paul. He ran into Abram, he became, became Abraham. God's giving you a new name in him. And I don't mean necessarily literally a new name. It might be. But basically he's changing the way you perceive yourself. That's why it's important. When we name our kids, it, like I was named Mark. And Mark means mighty warrior. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't think about it. It didn't mean anything to me till I became a believer. But God's giving you a new name. So that goes along with the chill the pool, <laughs> you know, the water, chill and rest and it will come to you, all this. So welcome everybody. How's everybody doing? I'm going to do the welcome today because Paul's going to preach if he can preach after that. <laughs> but we want to welcome you to Valor Center. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Say you're okay if you're okay. Okay. I'm pretty stunned by what just happened. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? How many things y'all... Okay, say it out loud. I don't know how many things y'all said that y'all couldn't know. It was... Yeah. They don't know. They don't... Nobody knew anything. God knows everything. He's got your number. He's got your number, Jay. <laughs> it's a, but it's good if God's got your number. You know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, the prophets, they're there to expose secret sin. There's no secret sin. Actually, prophets are to expose what our destiny is that's in our heart that we always knew. And Sonia has always known it. We've always known who we really are. And that's what God's showing a lot of people. So, anyway, my name is Mark Lawson, but I'm, I'm the, the pastor here, but I'm not going to preach in a few minutes. Usually somebody else does this. But Paul's getting a rest today. He's going to take my job. <laughs> But uh, we're this Valor Center. Join us. We're assembling a company of all-in Christians to awaken, activate, and engage in a spiritual awakening and warfare. Say warfare. warfare. Please say warfare. warfare. <laughs> Pretty pleased with Sugar on top. No. That has begun to cover America and the earth. Habakkuk 2.14. So, in light of that, uh, that's kind of what we did yesterday, and that led to this, and that's kind of where we are. So... I don't know what, what uh, Paul's going to do, but Paul can say more accidentally than most say on purpose, so it'll be good. But I want to welcome you. Also, we got, uh, a, we're doing something different next week. We will not be here. So if you come, you want to visit us, come next week, come in shorts or something, maybe a little warmer, uh, uh, that you can, we're going to do a picnic, if you'd put up that graphic. There we go. We're going to be right down, right down this road, to hit, take a left on Hickory and go, it's not quite three miles right past right past the school, right past uh, Holly Springs Elementary. It's right there on the left, J.B. Owens Park. We're in Pavilion 2. Uh, go back, no, go back to the park. Leave it on the park one. Uh, I mean the picnic one, please. I'll wait. It's the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to be there. I don't know. We have a technical difficulty. There it is. Okay. But it's, uh, we'll be there from 1030 to 2, 230. But just show, that's what we're going to do. We're, we're, we were talking about doing different things for months. And sometimes we say, why don't we just have a meal after church or during church? So it, it worked. It seemed to work out. There were some things that happened the last few weeks that made it clear. So anyway, we got that booked. Bring food uh, enough for your family, maybe a few more, because we always have guests that show up, and we invite everybody in the room here to be there, and people that, that uh, 
you know, maybe not here today. They'll be there, but we're going to have a great time. Uh, but uh, sorry, there's no grilling, so don't show up with hot dogs that need to be grilled and barbecue, you know, um, the briquettes. Don't show up with that. They don't have that. They don't let it happen, I guess, because there were fires. And no unleashed dogs. So if you show up with 17 dogs, <laughs> make sure they're on 17 leashes, okay? Is that a, okay? I guess they could all be on one leash, but good luck. But this will be what we're doing next week. So there'll be a sign on the door if you show up and you go, oh, I forgot. Just come on over. And, but remember now, bring enough food and we'll supply all the rest. Uh, uh, also bring desserts too. Bring a full whatever you want for your family and more. A little more because you never know who's going to show up. So is that okay? Everybody good with that? That's going to be fun. Also, then the next week, uh, on a Saturday, not the Sunday. Sunday is July or um, June 4th, but we have our Day of Miracles. Now, we've done seven or eight of these, so we know what happens. How many of you have been to one of these Day of Miracles before? Okay, so many of you know what happens, but basically we just go over here, we set up some tables, have some food, set up the baptistry, fill it up. Uh, I have nobody pre-planned going to come, but I think you guys ought to come and get baptized. Um, we'd do it today if we had it set up, but uh, but we're going to need a lot of help for that. A lot of people have indicated they will help, but we need to set up things, tear down. We're going to have a bounce house. Guys bringing it over from Cartersville, got a bounce house. We're going to have a live worship team from Encounter. It's just three people, but they sing both Spanish and English, and they're bilingual, and then we'll, they're going to bring some translators to help us if there uh, there's a number of Hispanic people around there um, last sat not yesterday but last Saturday I went with a, uh, or two Saturdays ago I went with the translator and we ran into a whole group of guys having Medela beer after they did their paint job they were all tired you could tell they're like <sighs> This, and this was like four in the afternoon, so they started early, and they're sitting there and prayed over and prophesied over one guy about his wife, stuff like that. But you just never know what's going to happen. Amen? Amen? But we need people to help us set up, tear down, greet, uh, food, drink. We need, I'd like to get a couple or three ladies to help us. We're going to have pizzas. It's going to be a simple, the food is, the only thing we're going to have is pizza. And we're not going to, you know, it's going to be simple, but uh, we're going to have a lot of pizzas. And we're going to get them over here. So if you want to help us set up and tear down that, the, we're going to have the tables all done. Uh, we're going to have water baptisms. Uh, uh, Caleb's renting a sound system. So it's going to be, it's just going to be awesome. It's just going to be everything we've always done, but bigger and better. Amen. Say that. And God bless the people at the, um, this is a, like a test run of doing things in a field and getting an opportunity. Uh, and fields, I saw fields, I dreamt of fields for years, and I saw the fields, so this is a field. Uh, we, I have a friend that has tents, we have tents, and we may do the next thing we may do, there's a tent event, and then we may go up to ball ground and do a bigger event. But so this is a, you know, we, we told you, you know, this is a church for the workers. You're gonna learn how to do ministry here. We're not just gonna sit and go, Oh, I like the words he says. You know, so it's important to be trained, but we need to be trained. Amen. Yeah. All of us can raise the dead. Jesus said, you can raise the dead. You can heal the sick. Are you all okay? Yeah. You actually believe this. So I'm going to pass this around. Uh, if you want to be part of that day of miracles, uh, we're just going to pass it around. You want to, in other words, working, helping us. That means you get there at 10, do a little work. And you know how it goes. People come and go all day. Not everybody is all there at one time. It's not a, it's not a crusade, and it's more of an organic a body of Christ uh, ministering to different people. So uh, we have a bunch of flyers. We gave away. We've already, yesterday alone, I think we passed out 100-plus flyers, a lot in the Hispanic community. We have a Spanish version back there. Don't let them sit. They, they don't do us any good if they're sitting here. I want them all gone. So take them somewhere, put them in a, ask if you can put it on the laundromat or wherever you go. Well, nobody goes to a laundromat, but <laughs> your apartment. How many of you live in an apartment? You could put it in the apartment place and tell some people. Okay. You all okay? They're right in the back. You can't miss them. This is, the location is just Cherokee Fairgrounds. 120 McClure Street. It's right off exit 16. From here, it's about eight minutes. May, maybe less. You get off at 16, go left, you're right there. So, um, 
It's a nice field, uh, surrounded with trailers. We'll have signs. We ha we're going to have to, I'm going to need a person to help me set out the signs that say Day of Miracles. We'll need to do that on Friday. Uh, they're printed, and I'm picking them up uh, tomorrow. But anyway, we're going to need a lot of help, but we just, we believe that God will provide everything we need. So thanks for helping. And if you want to give, we're going to receive your offering now. But if you want to give toward this project, we're renting porta potties. We got a bounce house. We're renting a sound. So all this stuff costs money. And, and we do everything in faith and we trust we'll have more than enough to cover it. Uh, we even had a, a person say, I want to give just to these projects. And they give them out every month just to these kind of outreach projects. So God's blessing us. But, but if you want to give today, when you give, uh, go to ValorCenter.org and click Donate or make checks out to Valor Center. If you need a check, I mean, if you need an envelope, lift up your hand right now. And uh, Paul, will you help us receive the offering? You and, uh, Well, we've already, uh, uh, even, even, she's helping us. But uh, Paul, would you help us? Thanks. Come on. Come on. Mark? Yes, sir. Let me just pray over this day of miracles. Right. Yes. Everybody stand. We're going to pray for this. And and if, you know, thank you for tithing. But if you want to sow toward the Day of Miracles, just say Day of Miracles on the check or on however you give. You go to Zell, you can go to centervalor at gmail.com or cash app dollar one six six life. So uh, this is going to be a big deal. This is activating saints. And we've got a few other churches that want to be involved. We have, by the way, 38 people on our outreach team, but only six or seven showed up yesterday. So um, I don't know what's happening with the, uh, you know, if they're, sometimes they're here, sometimes we'll have 15 show up. Sometimes we have, to, one time we had 20 something show up. So we just never know, but we're activating saints to do this. So Rick has faith to pray for this. So I want to believe for good weather too that day. We need good weather and next week, right? So go ahead, Rick. Father God, we just come before you and we just present our plans for this to your throne. We lift this up and we say, Lord, we pray your will be done. We pray for weather. We pray for uh, the, the right people, the people that you have chosen to come. Yes. To, we pray for salvations. We pray for baptisms. Yeah. We pray for healings. We pray for, for addictions to drop off of people. And Lord, we just, we just, right now, we command all of the spiritual forces of wickedness that want to interfere with this or interfere with anybody else. Lord, we tell them to go in the name of Jesus. And you must stand aside because we are going to accomplish this. We're going to accomplish this in Jesus' name with Jesus. We invite you, Jesus. We invite you, Holy Spirit. We invite you, Father God, to come down. And Lord, we just, right now, we just ask you to release your angels to make this event an event that brings you glory and we lift this up in Jesus name amen amen yeah, another thing, we um, next week is Pentecost, so we're going to have a feast of Pentecost at the park. So Pentecost at the park, okay? Be there at 1030, we're going to have a great time, and um, thank you for your donations and sewing and your liberal giving, thank you. Now, uh, Paul Herb is going to come up and give us an awesome word, he always does, and we're really blessed to have him, I want you to give him a big hand, come on Paul. Come up and preach to us. All right. So you said we're going to have bounce potties there? Or was, I didn't understand that. Oh, porta potties and bounce. I thought, heard that wrong. I'm like, I've never been in a bounce potty. That, that'd be interesting. Well, anything to draw a crowd, right? That's what Jesus did, right? All right. Say, I think we need to get used to more ministry. You know, the fivefold ministry, God gave that to the church to do what? Write books and make a lot of money, right? And travel. Ooh. No, it's for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. So, you know, pastors, teachers, the prophetic, they are given to the church to equip us so that we can do the ministry. So we can minister, learn how to minister to people. And I'd say we need to get used to that because it's going to start happening more and more. And everyone is able to do the stuff. Amen. You guys glad? 
that it's not just for the professional gifted people, but it's for the amateurs, right? Jesus sent out 70 amateurs yeah. to heal the sick, right? They didn't know what they were doing, but they saw a lot of miracles. And uh, it brought the Lord a lot of joy. Um, so I say put your seatbelts on because it's going gonna, it's gonna to increase. And just real quick, I had a word also for Jay. Um, I felt like... Um, you have, you've been given a legacy of faith. I don't know if your grandfather was a, a, a preacher um, or someone in your family, but you've been given a legacy of faith, and God sees your attention to detail. You're a very detail-oriented person, and God sees that, and so he's, he's going to give you more because you've taken care of what God's given you. And I just want to encourage you, Just um, he's going to give you more because you've taken care of what he's given you um, up to right now. Amen? And also for Chelsea, I just had a quick word. I feel like you're a dreamer, and God says you, you need to dream bigger. Because what he has for you and what you're dreaming, they don't... He has more than what you're dreaming. He says, dream bigger. Don't be afraid to dream bigger because he's going to he's gonna, um, make your dream. I don't like saying it. Make your dreams come true. But he is. He's going to make your dreams come true. I remember one time I preached somewhere and the guy before me was like, this is the year everyone's dream is going to come true. And I was preaching that day on the cross and how it's not your will. I'm like, well, one of us has missed God today. So I kind of hesitate telling people that, but that's, that's a true word for you, I believe. Yep. Um, but I believe um, that uh, how many got born again and you got the real thing when you got born again? Amen. That happened to me. I got saved when I was a kid, and then I backslid when I was in eighth grade. I remember the day. I was out with a friend of mine out at night running through the town like kids used to do in the old days. We didn't have, you know, games. <laughs> videos so we used to just run around the town and cause trouble but he said you're a Christian aren't you and I said no I'm not and from that day on I remember it like it was yesterday I got into sin I turned from the Lord and I went down the wrong road and thankfully I came back in my early 20s but when I came back I got the real thing I got a supernatural encounter with the Lord that um, totally changed my life Does that, did that happen to anybody in here? yes I mean, it messed me up because I grew up in traditional religion, knowing everything. And all of a sudden, God gave me a gift of faith. I got born again. And that started me on the path of the supernatural. Nobody had to drag me to church. Nobody had to. I, I was there. I was nobody had to. You know, people did disciple me. But I got the real thing. I got the supernatural you know, born again experience. And how many know we need that today? And you know what? It's not supposed to stop at salvation. A lot of Christians, that happens. They get born again. But how many know we're supposed to possess the land? The promised land. God, when you get born again, he's like, all right, here you go. There's the promised land. Go and possess it. Most people don't, right? You can have as much of God as you want. You can walk in as much, you can go as deep as you want into the promises of God. But you have to possess it. You have to go get it. And uh, this lifestyle of the supernatural that Jesus showed us in the scripture, we're supposed to have a supernatural lifestyle. Did you know that? It's not supposed to be, oh great, you get saved and now you have to no fun anymore, just get, you know, try to be a good person and go to church. How many want that, right? It's not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to be involved in the supernatural um, lifestyle that Jesus laid out for us. And how many believe God will give us what we need for the hour that we're in? You guys believe that? We're in kind of a crazy time in history. It's like lunacy has gone mainstream, right? Some of the things that they're doing nowadays, it's like, oh my goodness. But God will give us what we need for the hour that we're in. And I want to talk about a couple things today because I believe um, God highlighted two main things that we need in this time specifically that's really going to help you. Discernment 
in the power of God. How many of you feel at times kind of locked up with the power of God? Like you know about the power of God, but you have trouble accessing that power. Anybody? Um, but we, we're going to need the power of God because guess what? We're up against supernatural forces that are bigger than us. You, got, you get that feeling? But guess what? They're not bigger than God. They're not more powerful than God. And the strategies of heaven are more powerful than the strategies of hell. Don't, don't uh, be, naive, be naive. Hell has a strategy against your life, right? <laughs> Help, that's, I love that word. Where's uh, Joel at? War, wisdom, and revelation. That's a good word right there. If I was into tattoos, I'd probably get that on my arm, you know? I say do it. All right. Uh, I got a needle at home. I'm old school. Give me a prison tat right there. Probably spell war wrong. What is that? <laughs> That'd be my luck. Mar. What's Mar? Oh, what's wrong? oh it's upside down. Oh, raw. <laughs> raw. raw. <laughs> it means revelation and wisdom. No, it's supposed to be the other way around. That's my biggest, that's probably why I didn't get tattoos, because I'm always like, man, he spelled it wrong. Why does this happen? But we need discernment, right? We need discernment. Jesus said, be careful, no one deceives you. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. I used to think that meant people are going to say, I am the Christ, Right? Has that ever happened to you? It happened to me once. A homeless guy came up and said he was the Christ. I'm like, no, you're not. You're not the Christ. That's not what Jesus was talking. He said, many will be preaching Jesus. Many will be preaching that I am the Christ. Don't be deceived. Many are going to be preaching Jesus. How many know many people are preaching Jesus? We need discernment, especially nowadays. We can hit the Internet and have 50, you know, words a day. But he said, be careful, no one deceives you. Many will come in my name saying I'm the Christ. <coughs> he said, the test the spirits, right, to see if they're from God. And what was the test in 1 John 4, 1? Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. And we right away we think, okay, that means the Mormons and the Jehovah Witness. We know they're false. I believe it's talking about every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in your flesh. That's of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus hasn't come in your flesh is not of God. And I believe we need to delete, you know, a lot of us have had bad teaching, over the years, we need to delete those files. Any teaching that implies that God doesn't live within you is not from God. I don't care if it sounds good. It's old, you know, maybe old covenant. It sounds good. God, come help us. God, come this. And it's a lot of it's ingrained in our thinking. It's not from God. It's anti-anointing. It's anti-Christ. Really, it's scary. But we have to be careful what we feed on now because of what we're up against. We can't just be a naive Christian that, well, that's the, the guy preaching, so it must be good. We have to be aware of false teachers, right? How many know false teachers have a teaching gift? Right. They're intriguing. Have you ever been like, wow, this guy is awesome? Yeah. And then you go, wait but that's crazy. That's not true. <laughs> what he's saying, a teaching gift will, will draw you in, even if it's false doctrine. And you'll be like, oh, this is, this is great. We have to have discernment. Why? Because it's coming down to the spirit of Antichrist and the spirit of God, right? Are you guys ready for round two? Remember the craziness that came through a couple years ago to where it was like, Wow, so uh, we can't go to the store anymore. Hmm, we can't work anymore. <laughs> you know, that was round one, right? Round two is coming eventually. So we have to be prepared. How are we going to prepare? We just need to hear the Lord's voice and walk in who he's called us to walk in, right? 
Uh, so we need discernment. Why do we need discernment? Because the enemy's strategy is to shut down the supernatural in your life. That's what that religious antichrist spirit does. It will shut down the supernatural aspect of Christianity from your life. And how many know if you shut that down, you're not walking in Christianity. You're not walking in Jesus. <laughs> um, beware of the contrary religious spirit. It's an antichrist spirit. Right? That's the one that when you go, when you're all excited and you go to Thanksgiving dinner, you go back home to tell them all the new church that you found. We, I speak in tongues now, Dad. <laughs> Shundo, want to hear it? Shundo, Robo, you know. And your traditional parents are like, what has happened to our child? <laughs> Jesus said in uh, Matthew 11, 17, John came neither eating and drinking, and you said you ha he has a demon, Right? Jesus, yeah, Jesus came eating and drinking, and you say he's a glutton and a wine bibber, that contrary religious spirit. You guys ever experienced that? Oh, yeah. I had a friend one time, and I was at the time going to a, a church in Massachusetts, on fire church, and he comes, and he's like, ah, the worship was okay, but... You know, every time I come here, it's like, here we go again, the Great Commission. He's rolling his eyes. That's all you guys talk about is the Great Commission. I'm like, okay, and? <laughs> but we were a fellowship that was wanted to reach the world. So that was, you know, we were like the Marines of, of the church. <laughs> I mean, it was a little overboard, I guess, but I was a single guy, and that was... That's, you know, it was just, let's reach the world, right? One time we handed out 5,000 flyers in a day, me and three other guys. It took us like six hours. That's a lot of flyers. Nobody came from that. <laughs> but hopefully I'll, I'll reap those seeds that were sown soon. But he's like, that's that contrary. Oh, here we go again. You know, the Great Commission. Is that all you guys talk about? Or it can be, okay, here you go. Signs and wonders and miracles. It's not all about signs and wonders, guys. Seek the giver, not the gifts. Have you ever heard that? Doesn't that sound wise? Seek the giver, not the only problem is that's not biblical, you know. It's both. But Paul said, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. Lust after spiritual gifts, right? Especially that you may prophesy. Why? Because it builds up the church. You know, Jesus' ministry, if you take the signs and wonders, the, you know, healings, deliverance, if you take that out of his ministry, there's no account of him helping people clean their garage out, right? <laughs> there's, or, you know, the good deed, the good works that he did, it doesn't tell us about how he raked an old, you know, a widow's leaves, you know, motor front yard. We don't see that. Why did he record all his miracles? But we need to unlock the kingdom power in our lives. And uh, be careful of that contrary spirit. Remember when Jesus cursed the cities like... Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum in Matthew eleven twenty. It says the cities where Jesus did most of his mighty works, they didn't repent. Imagine that. The cities where Jesus did most of his mighty works, they didn't repent. And he actually cursed those cities. We don't we forget about that. Why didn't they not repent? They were very religious Jewish Jewish cities. He was too, you know, the miracles and all that. They saw all that, and guess what? They weren't into it. They're like, nah, we're sticking to our religious guns, our traditional, you know, synagogues and, and their way of doing things. They didn't repent. If you, want, if you want to cultivate the supernatural in your life, you have to have discernment with the teaching that you're listening to, the people that you hang around, um, you have to have discernment. How many 
uh, one, how, or let me ask it this way. How many have a desire for this, a supernatural lifestyle? Raise your hand. Right. You have that desire. That's a God-given desire. But Jesus said to Peter in Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom, right? And I love that scripture. The keys of the kingdom. Have you ever had a, a keychain? I'm a key key guy, keychain guy. I used to have a keychain, and one day I noticed, wow, I have like 15 keys on it. I guess it was like a self-defense thing too, you know? <laughs> And whack in the head with my keychain. But one day I realized I didn't know where about five or six of the keys were for. Have you ever done that? I'm a loyal guy, so I, I tend to keep things past their time. So I think that was a, a time in our life where we were moving a lot and changing jobs, and you just acquire different keys, right? Um, well, the same thing happens with spiritual things and the keys of the kingdom. If you don't use them, you forget what they're for, right? And we start to forget, and then we don't even have the key. We don't even, we don't, it's not even in our mind. It's not in our, in our lifestyle. Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, I give you the ability and the authority to get things done. That's what happened today. You guys got things done up here. How many know people need deliverance? They need healing. They need a miracle. They don't need more talking, right? What did Paul say? The kingdom isn't of talk, but of power, right? How many know there's a lot of talking nowadays? A lot of talk nowadays, amen? Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has, you know, three keys to a happy marriage. Everyone has, you know, and how many know all wisdom isn't from God? The Bible talks about a demonic wisdom, right? Just because something makes sense doesn't mean it's from God, amen? So we have to have discernment. How many have ever had your boss give you a project to do at work, and he says, all right, here's the credit card. You got 10 people under you. Go get it done, right? What is that? That's called authority, right? How many of you, you know, every time you had to make a decision would call the boss, and you're wondering, why is he getting a little irritated? Because he gave you the, the responsibility to get it done. Right? That's what the keys of the kingdom are for. Are for. That's what um, authority is for. You know, kingdom power doesn't come down from heaven when we need it. That's not how kingdom power operates. Kingdom power operates from authority. God gives you authority, and now he wants you to get it done. Right? That's why he said to heal the sick. When we go out on outreach, we always emphasize a demonstration of the spirit and power. Why? Because it's not of just talk. It, it gets people's attention. It shows you, hey, we're not just talking about it. Something just happened. You just got healed. We had three people get healed in front of Ollie's yesterday. It was amazing. And we tried something a little different. We just went up, and if someone was in pain, we would just lay hands on them. We didn't even pray. We just laid hands on them, asked them a few questions, talked about the weather. And then had them check it. And this one lady is like, oh, wow, it is better. And it wasn't all the way better, so we did it again. And then we just, you know, laid our hands on her and just started asking her questions about, you know, the weather and things. And then took our hands off. Because sometimes when you minister healing to people, if you pray too much, your natural mind starts getting in the way. And pretty soon you're like going, it's like... How many know the natural mind, the Bible says, is hostile towards God? Whoa. That's what the Bible says. So even when in our mind we're trying to think faith, 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 healing, 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 <laughs> the natural mind can't get it done, right? But it's really hard. You have to show a lot of restraint to not do that. You know, that's, that comes from bad teaching that we've been brought up in, mainly, because if you would just lay hands on people, your natural mind says, that's not enough. How can you just lay hands on somebody? Who do you think you are, Jesus? Yep. Well, he's in, us. he's in us. Paul said, whoever's joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord, right? 
Yeah, there's a lot of scriptures. What's the address on that phone? That's good. On what? Ollie's? No, it's the, <laughs> just put it in your GPS, Mark. No. Oh, Ephesians 6.10. <laughs> Be strong in the Lord. And, no, that's not it. I don't know what, which one you're referring to. But, uh, oh, that's in... Uh, I don't know. Somewhere. If... <laughs> Well, let's just take a minute and uh but first John two six says he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Amen. So all of us I think raise their hands that we have a desire, even if it's just a small desire to walk in the supernatural and more power. I just want to speak to that desire. This morning, because that is a kingdom desire. That is a kingdom desire. And uh, in Matthew 13, 31, well, first of all, did you know everything God does, it starts from desire? Did you know that? When you got born again, what happened? Did you have a desire to, to give your heart to the Lord? Yeah. There's a lot of people right now that have a desire. Did you ever, maybe when you were sowing some wild oats or whatever, you see, in the back of your mind, you're, you have a desire. Someday, on my deathbed, I'm going to get it right with the Lord, right? <laughs> you had a desire. That was the Lord. That's the kingdom. And uh, think about when you wanted to get filled with the Spirit. It starts with a desire. Or how about um, the will of God for your life? It starts with a desire, right? God puts a desire. The Bible says if we delight ourselves in Him, He will set the desires of our heart. He directs our steps by putting a desire in our heart, right? Even when your flesh doesn't want to. Have you ever had the Lord say, no, you're going to do this today, and your flesh is like, I don't want to. Right. I remember one time we were, my daughter was in color guard and we were going to one of her games and uh, we had been out praying for the sick that day. So I was all we saw some miracles and um, we get to the, the stadium and we're, you know, it's jam packed. I don't know what it is about the South. You guys love high school football games, but uh, this place is jammed. And uh, there was a guy in the bleachers about five rows back and he had like a full neck brace and he was like, uh, you could tell he's wincing in pain. And I'm like, my flesh is going, I just want to enjoy the game or whatever. And uh, the Holy Spirit was so strong on me. He was, it was like physically turning my body to go. And I was like being tormented because the Holy Ghost is like, uh-uh, you need to go up there and pray for this guy. And it was so strong. It was like literally you know, turning my body. So finally, I gave in and I went up. You know, it's awkward. The place is jam packed. So I climb over everybody to get up there. And the guy doesn't want prayer. And I'm like, no, you're getting. I climbed all the way up here. I'm praying for you. So I laid, I laid my hands on. I still prayed for him. I don't know if he got healed, but I went back to my seat. But how many know that that's how the desire of the Lord is sometimes? My flesh did not want to do that. But the Holy Ghost said, I, uh, I don't care. You need to go pray for this guy. So that's how the Lord does it, right? He puts a desire in our heart. Matthew 13, 31 says, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which is the least of all seeds, but when it grows, it becomes a tree. It's talking about kingdom desire is the seed. Did you know that? When God puts a desire in your heart, that's a, that's a seed. Any gardeners in here? Anybody have a garden? We have a, a garden. This year we're like city farmers, I guess. We don't have much land. A couple side yards. and little. Uh, we have a front yard and a little piece in the back. But... Uh, so my wife planted all the seeds. We finally, we got the soil right. And I, I, I think I spent about $600 on, you know, we'll get about $30 worth of carrots out of it. But I guess it makes sense, right? And it's an organic garden, so you have to be out there killing bugs every day. You know, <laughs> last year they destroyed our tomato plants. Every single tomato, they were on top of the leaf foot bugs. 
horrid little creatures, but I had tried to think of everything. I rigged up an old vacuum cleaner and I was out there every day vacuuming up these bugs and they'd spin around and it's like bug hummus or something. It was gross. <laughs> maybe that, maybe we could try that bug hummus. But it amazes me, and maybe I'm just getting old and I'm, I don't watch much TV, but I'm easily amused. But, you know, these seeds, she went out and planted the seeds, and I don't know if it was the next day or the day after, they had already, you know, I, I don't know if it was the cantaloupe, the lettuce, these guys were already popping out of the ground. Not full cantaloupes, I'd be lying. <laughs> A full cantaloupe popped out of the... But that's supernatural. I mean, you guys are like, whatever, Paul, it's just a seed in the ground. But how does a seed, you put a seed in the ground, put a little water on it, and all of a sudden the roots go down, it germinates, right? The, it starts sprouting. That's supernatural. And guess what? The seeds of the kingdom, the gods, those desires that you have in your heart, those are seeds of the kingdom. And guess what? Seeds in the package, they're dormant. They're not dead. You know, you think that thing's been in there for a year. It's just dormant. It's not dead. I think they last most of them for two or three years. But that's how the desires from the Lord are that are inside and you haven't done anything with it yet. It's just dormant. It hasn't been activated yet. You haven't planted it. It says the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field, right? What did he do? He owned it. He sowed the seed, the kingdom seed, in his field. And your desire for the supernatural is the same way. And that's what I want to kind of focus on, the supernatural in your life. He planted it in his field. He owned it. He took responsibility. How many know somebody can teach you all day long, but unless you own it, you're not going to learn. I'm a, a trainer where I work, a driver trainer. For we help these guys get their commercial driver's license. And, you know, you can train people all day long, but eventually you have to figure this out, right? And a lot of these guys in their training, now they're dealing with construction crews, and these guys don't like new guys. So there's, you know, everybody wants me to train them because I got to, I'm kind of a gracious guy with the new guys because <laughs> I'm a believer. And I kind of provide a buffer between the abuse from the crews and the new guy. But um, at some point, you have to figure it out on your own. And see, that's how this supernatural lifestyle is with the Lord, this kingdom power, this authority he's given us to heal the sick, to cast out devils. He's given you this authority, but guess what? You have to own it. You have to take responsibility if you want to walk in this kind of power. It's like the promised land. How deep do you want to go? You have to possess the land. Many stop at salvation, right? I don't know where the scripture is, but I thought of it a little while ago when it says, um, you know, someday when our works are going to go through the fire, and whatever's not of value will be burned up. And it says some people will just have their salvation at the end of that. And, uh, hey, how many know that's good? At least you're in the, you, in the gate, right? Maybe your mansion's a little tent. Maybe there's a tent section in heaven. Uh, hey, that'd be fine with me. It'd probably be pretty nice tents. But some people, they don't want to go into the promised land, right? Even the supernatural stuff, they're like, yeah, I'm good. I'm just saved. A lot of churches are like that. They preach salvation every, every week. I grew up in a church like that. I fought off. I got good at fighting off conviction, right? <laughs> they have altar calls for like 30 minutes. You know, we're going to sing it one more time if you're not right with God. But they do that every single week, and it was just... You know, the congregation was spiritual babies because they never went any deeper than salvation. But kingdom seed always involves dying to ourself. That's the, that's the, uh, the catch. 
What Jesus say, unless a guy, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. It's just a seed, right? So the seed goes into the ground and the outer shell dies, right? So the new life can spring forth. That's how kingdom seeds are. I remember a few day of miracles back, um, a guy, Roger, who comes here now and then, he, uh, it's kind of at the end, we're eating pizza, and he comes up and he goes, Paul, let's, you want to go hand out flyers at the laundromat with me? And I'm like, eh, I'm kind of eating my pizza right now, you know. <laughs> kind of not, I'm, I'm in the, the next uh, phase of this day of miracles where I eat my pizza. <laughs> but I, I put it down, I said, yeah, let's go. So we went over there, and we went in, and we saw two instant miracles. Just by these ladies had pain. I said, hey, watch this. Grab my hand. And uh, we just told the pain to go and just waited, waited a minute. And the one lady, I forget, she had an arm or something. She got totally healed. And the other woman had a leg thing. And she was laughing so hard because she got healed. She's like, I don't feel anything. And it was just, you know, it was one of those crazy things that just happens. And Roger had never seen something like that. So this totally wrecked him. He called me, you know, three or four times after that, telling me he's played, because we took video of it, he's played a video for all kinds of people, and he's like, this impacted my life. That seed, that supernatural that he had in, started getting stirred up. It started getting activated. It wasn't dormant anymore. And so, it set him on a track, but he hasn't been on an outreach since, because guess what? Kingdom seeds always involve dying to yourself. To your flesh is always going to say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go out and risk the rejection. I see that guy's got a neck brace on, but anybody ever have, ever have the Lord speak to you when you go in to a store and there's somebody on a with a cane or something and... You see it, and usually if you go with your wife, your wife will go, oh, did you see the person with the cane? It's like, ah, yes, I saw her. I saw her. Would you hush? I'm trying to ignore her. <laughs> That's your flesh. I know you guys are all spiritual and perfect and just go right over to her and get her healed. I wrestle with that because the Lord says, hey, did you see the, the guy with the crutches? <laughs> yeah, I saw him, Lord, but I'm busy. I got to get these things. Kingdom seeds, they always involve dying to ourselves, right? Yeah. I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. We're in a narcissistic culture, aren't we? <laughs> you guys know who Narcissus was? The guy from Greek mythology. I think he was a son of the river god, or I forget the god's name, small g. But, uh,. He was the guy that fell in love with his own reflection in the water, so much so he actually fell into the water and drowned from self-love. Hold on a second. <laughs> Me preaching at Valor. Hold on one second. <laughs> second okay but uh that's true isn't it we live in a self-loving system you know selfies you know hey would you mind liking my page it's like you know early on when that started i'm like well i don't know i don't know if i like I w let me check your page out i don't know if i like it why what do you mean like my page so isn't that weird <laughs> Now it's just a given, like, well, you know what I mean, brother. You know, it'll help me. <laughs> We're in a narcissistic culture, and we don't even realize that it's affecting us. I can't see my dad taking selfies of himself. Hey, <laughs> sending it out, you know, this is me. Yeah, he was. That old school generation, I can't see them doing that stuff. I mean, human nature's always existed. They just probably did it in different ways. But we have to be careful that this doesn't get a hold of us, right? The narcissistic self-love, you know, thank God for filters on our photos, right? In the old days, you snapped a bunch of pictures and then here they come. <laughs> you didn't send out the best of 10. 
It's like my wife and daughter, they're very photogenic. I could snap a million pictures of them and they're all perfect. When we do a family picture, it's like, no, nah, look at dad's face. We're gonna, we've taken 10 and dad, look at, what are you trying to do there, dad? I was trying to smile. They're like, no, don't smile in this one. Right? That's how, that's how you know, we, we don't want to look bad. That's the name of the game nowadays. <clears throat> the only problem is self-love is contrary to the kingdom. Right? How many know Galatians 2.20, that's what being a Christian is. You guys know that scripture? I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, right? Who loved me and gave himself for me. That's what being a Christian is. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Yeah. It's not the other way around. We're not human beings having a spiritual experience. But that's how we live, right? We, we're human, right? I'm only human, right? I dabble in the spiritual. I have an encounter with the Lord here and there. No, we're spiritual beings. And this human being, this is just an experience, this isn't even really reality. I had a guy on outreach yesterday. We were talking about this. Like, think about it. You can't even stay the same age for more than a second. This isn't reality. Think of everything you had, everything you did this week. Think of that cheeseburger, Paul, you had a couple days ago. Where is it? It's gone, right? Every experience, everything you tried to hold on to in your life, where is it now? It's gone. The temporary world is not reality. The spiritual, that's why Paul said, we look at things that are unseen because the things that are seen, that are natural, are temporary. They're fleeting. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is of the world. And then what does it say? The world is passing away. Right, my wife's in real estate now. I'm, you know, how many have ever, ever heard the term, we're gonna get our forever home? How many know there's no such thing as a forever home, <laughs> right? I remember a few years ago, Heaven. yeah, praying and, and asking the Lord about renting. Should we rent a house? Should we rent? Should we buy? And the Lord said, you know, you're all renting, first of all. <laughs> I was like, okay, good point, Lord. <laughs> Should we rent or buy? Well, you're all renting. It's like, mm, we're even renting these bodies, right? We can't keep our heart beating, right? The guys I work with sometimes ask them, well, how can, you don't need God, how long can you hold your breath? Like a whole minute. The guy yesterday, I said that to him, he's like, well, I'm a scuba diver. I'm like, okay, five minutes. <laughs> Congratulations, you can survive five minutes. We're more vulnerable than we think. But we have to go from a self mindset to a Christ in us mindset. Amen. Amen. And I want to just look real quick at that mindset. I know it's late. But uh, we have to change our mindset. Get rid of that bad teaching that says, when, you know, God come heal people. You need to heal people. That's what authority is. You need to get it done. And if you begin to change your mindset, you'll see more miracles in your life. You will. If you're joined to the Lord, you're one spirit with the Lord, when you minister to people, all you have to do is remember, when I lay hands on you, Jesus is laying hands on you. Amen. That's not arrogance. That's, that's the truth. How many know um, the truth is the truth even if we don't believe it? If you believe that uh, gravity isn't true, okay, you don't believe in gravity, right? What happens if I drop this phone? Right. It's heavier than air. It's density or gravity, either one. You guys know what I'm saying. Would you, hush? Would you hush? Recess was my best subject in high school, in uh, elementary school. I didn't pay attention in science. Well, no, actually, gravity is involved when you drop that. 
But just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's not true, right? So there is, so when we change our mindset, we are just lining up with the truth. All right, Luke 9, 1, 2. Jesus gave them power and authority over all demons to cure diseases, sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. The word heal means to reverse a condition, a physical condition. Yeah. So when we go out and minister, and even in here, when we pray for people, we're reversing that physical condition. Yeah. We're reversing, we're restoring uh, from an illness. And I just want to look at one more, one more thing. In John 17, this is another key that if you get this, it'll unlock the power in your life. John 17, 2023. Um, John 17 is my favorite chapter in the Bible, mainly because Jesus prays specifically for me. I mean, you can do what you want, but I tend to personalize the scripture. And he said, I don't pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. And this whole, this whole script, this whole chapter is basically Jesus praying, praying. And he, you know, he's, it's amazing if you put your name in there, he's praying for you, not just for the disciples, but for everyone that will believe through their name. He says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who, I, who will believe in me through their word, that all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory or the value which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. The same glory or the same value that the Father has for Jesus, Jesus gave us that same glory, that same value. And this will unlock freedom in your life like nothing else. It'll unlock the power of God that you're trying to access. Knowing who you are, knowing that you're valued. Oh, one spirit with the Lord is 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Yep. When we're joined to the Lord. And that word joined actually means glued to the Lord. When we're glued to the Lord. So remember when Jesus said it's not, remember when Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and it will be enough. It'll be sufficient, right? Show us the Father. Philip's one of my favorite disciples because Philip's the guy that, um, you know, after they uh, martyred Stephen, Philip just went to the next city by himself and got the whole city turned on its head with miracles. It says they listened to the words that he said because of the miracles that he did. And that's kind of been uh, my motto to myself when we go out to demonstrate the kingdom. They'll listen to you. If you read their mail and you get them healed, they tend to listen a little better than if you're just yep. giving them the Roman road and asking them to pray a prayer. But remember when, when Philip said to Jesus, just show us the Father. That's in Luke, in uh, John 10. And what did Jesus say to him? He said, the Father in me does the works. Jesus pointed inside to the Father doing the works in him. Right? Just like when the, the religious guy said, Jesus, show us the kingdom. Where is it going to come? Where, you know, where is the kingdom at? Jesus said, it's, you're looking at this all wrong. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Right? And this is how the power of God is. We don't ask for the power to come. Don't ask for God to come. He's amazing out there and with his power. It's inside of you. Amen. And Jesus modeled this when he said, it's the Father in me that does the works. Jesus didn't even do the works. That's why we go, why didn't Jesus pray? He just went around, he laid hands on people. He, he went around and devils just left people. We think it was because Jesus was driving them out. Jesus was walking in authority, but it was the Father 
in me. That's what Jesus said. The Father in me does the works. Just like when we go out and lay hands on people, it's Jesus in me doing the works. I have the authority to get it done, but it's Jesus that's in me doing the works. So this will change your life. This will change your life. And Jesus says we can have that same place of relationship that he has with his Father. That's what he's saying in John 17. And that's when the glory of God will manifest in our life, when you get the revelation that you have that same, the same love that the Father has for Jesus, he has for you. You get that revelation, it will, it will unlock power in your life like you've never had before. It'll not unlock that, even just to walk in victory. How many would like to just walk in victory all the time? That's possible. You may feel depression, and how many know in the promised land, guess what was the first thing they encountered? Harassment from their, from their enemies. How many have been harassed this past week from your enemies? Most of the time you get these things come into your mind harassing you. You can still walk in victory and be harassed by your enemies at the same time. But you choose to not listen to the enemy, you know. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, the Bible says to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word might means a force to overcoming immediate resistance. That's what might is. It overcomes immediate resistance. How many have ever felt immediate resistance? <laughs> like when you wake up before your coffee. It's like, ah, uh, well, there's my, there's the devils again. <laughs> I remember one time I woke up and I felt like the devil grabbed a hold of me. He goes, ah, I'm not letting go. So I grabbed a hold of him and said, ah, me neither. So, you know, we laid there awkwardly for a moment. <laughs> but you need to have that attitude. Oh, okay, you're not going to, you're going to harass me. I'm going to harass you. I'm going to go out on outreach. I'm going to pray in tongues as loud as I can. Give you some panic attacks. Even when we go out, when you, f I always kid around and say, you know, the devil's more nervous than we are. Because if you feel that nervousness, that's really hell that you're feeling, yeah. getting nervous. You know, that's, how, that's what intercessors deal with when they're in the line at the grocery store and they start to feel depression. It's usually the person behind you that has that feeling. That's what you're getting. So one last scripture, John 17, 23, Jesus said that they may be made perfect in one. How many want to be perfect? Well, that word perfect is interesting. This is Jesus' prayer. How many know he's, Jesus is going to get his prayers answered? You guys believe that? Yeah. Jesus will get his prayer answered, and this is his prayer. I and them and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that, they, and that the world would know they may, that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Guess what that word perfect means? It actually comes from um, a picture of a pirate telescope. You know those pirate telescopes that you extend out? And it's the unfolding one stage at a time to function in full strength, full capacity, and full effectiveness. That's what the word perfect is, that Jesus prayed for you, that you would be perfected in one. In your relationship with Jesus, that you have that revelation that just like Jesus had of the love from his Father, you have that same relationship. Imagine if this is true. That's crazy. I believe it is true. But how many want to function in full strength? How many are maybe at half strength right now? Because of your mind going, ah, I need God's power. I feel empty. I feel empty. Reject every teaching that says you're empty. Amen. You have to. Reject every teacher or preacher that makes you feel like they have something that you don't have. You're hungry. You're empty. You know, a church that preaches to your old man, they could, 
they can fill up the church and make a lot of money. Because how many know your old man doesn't pray enough? Your old man isn't righteous enough, right? So I could get all of you guys up here on the altar if I just hit the right button of your old man. And you could do this all the time. The only, I was part of a group that did that. They preached to the old man. I have got calluses on my knees from repenting so much. <laughs> I was at the altar every week. You know, my heart was right, but that's the old man. You're not going to get far. That's tiring. And you're never going to be able to pray enough. Paul, you don't pray enough. Sorry, brother. You need to repent. That's, that's hard, right? <laughs> It's not about how much you pray. We were in a neighborhood one time and we were ministering to these guys that didn't speak English. There's three of them. We just laid hands on them. They all got hit by the Holy Ghost and started laughing, crying. And then afterwards, they're like, how long do you guys pray every day? And we're like, I think like five minutes today. <laughs> They were blown away, but they were looking at it all wrong. It's not how much you do. And hey, I, I love praying, you know. I've, I got logged, you know, hours of prayer, and we need to pray. But your new man, we need to put that silver bullet into the old man. Amen. It says, I'm crucified with Christ. My old man is crucified with Christ. Yeah. But my new man, that's what I live out of. Your new self, every, doesn't it say to put on yeah. the new man? Yeah. Put on the new self yeah. every day. Yeah. And that old man is supposed to be dead. Yeah. That old man is supposed to be dead. So we need to operate in full strength, full capacity, full effectiveness, and allow Christ to do the works in us as we exercise authority. You are what God's doing on the earth. Remember that God has chosen the church. So look around. This is what God's doing on the earth. Ephesians 4.12, the ministry is for the body. Paul said that he labored, like giving birth, that Christ would be formed in the people that he was ministering to. Ephesians 5.27 says that he might present her to himself a glorious church, full of glory, not having spot or wrinkle. This is when we get the revelation of who we are, and we begin to walk in full strength, full effectiveness. The body is going to get this. What if it's our generation that gets a hold of this? It's going to change things. So I encourage you this morning, don't bury that seed. If you want to unlock the power of God, you know, if you're burying seed, you bury dead things, typically, right? right. Don't bury the seed. Plant it. Take, own it. Take responsibility. Begin to step out. Get around people that are seeing miracles. Get around teaching that, um, you know, get on YouTube. Get on the Internet. Find out people that are doing the stuff, walking in spiritual gifts. It will get on you. Because it's a person that's doing the works. When you see people doing all kinds of miracles, Jesus is doing the miracles through them. So get around that stuff, and it will build you up. It'll, it'll change your life. But don't bury the seed. Plant the seed. Plant the seed. Is it perfect? Yes, the seed is perfect. But guess what? I've overwatered the garden a few times in the past. I've probably killed a few tomato plants, right? We're not perfect, right? So how we, how we cultivate the seed may not be perfect, but it says the sower went out and just sowed seed. The seed is perfect. You can sow seed in those desires you have in your heart. Those are perfect kingdom seeds. So plant those seeds. Even if it's not perfect, guess what? It's going to grow. If you just take steps, even in regards to healing people, getting words and knowledge, the prophetic, it's going to start with a, a thought, a desire. It's not going to ever be a loud voice. It's going to be that seed. And it's still going to grow. Have you ever seen, you know, something growing in the middle of the street? We have a couple of things from last year's garden. We kind of just ripped it all out and started over in a new spot. 
So I think that spot was cursed or something. But there's a couple, like a little tomato guy comes up. I'm going to live. It's like, no, you're not. We curse you. Get out of here. Give you to the neighbor cat. But the seed is supernatural. It's going to live. It's going to try to live if you plant it. Right? Once that outer shell and those roots go down, the outer shell dies. Once you step out in faith, it may not be perfect, but keep stepping out in faith. Because it's supernatural. Amen. So why don't we just stand, and I just encourage you, plant those seeds of faith. Don't bury your desire for the supernatural. Don't bury your desire to walk like Jesus. Because... That's what being a Christian is. That's what you want a life of signs and wonders, miracles. You want to be able to access heaven when the devil attacks your family. You want to be able to access the power. Change your mindset. Don't think that it, God, come help us. He did help us. He gave us Jesus. He said, you're the first, he's, Jesus is the firstborn among many brethren. He's our example. Yes. He showed us how to do this, showed us how to walk it out. So, Lord, I just pray for everyone standing today, God, everyone in this place, Lord, that you would bring increase, that we would plant these kingdom seeds, God, Lord, that we would uh, continue to grow in the supernatural, to face the uh, supernatural um, onslaught of hell that's against us. I pray everyone would be full of the power of God today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Wow, that was awesome. Give Paul a big hand. Especially the 1 Corinthians six seventeen. I will never forget that. If you're joined to the Lord, you're one spirit with Him. So it's the Lord doing the healing. And let me tell you this. You saw them leave. She came over. She said she's manifesting stuff. And we need. To, she needs to, you know, things are we're need, needing to leave her. <laughs> I don't know else to say it. So they left. They had to go uh, back home. To, you know, she was maybe about to um, relieve herself of some demons. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen deliverances, but they're not very, they're kind of messy sometimes. Amen? Amen? So I thank you for praying for her. Thank you for that word, Paul. Amen. There's something awesome. Okay, so next week we won't be here, but we'll be over there, three miles over, right off Hickory Road at 1030. Bring enough food for your family. We'll have a cooler, drinks, ice, utensils, all that. But don't forget desserts. We're not going to bring the desserts, but everybody bring their uh, enough for their family and a little more. We're going to have a great time. Um, We'll be in Pavilion 2, which is the one not close, not right next to the playground as before, but it's the one down the hill a little bit. So thanks for doing that. Also, I wanted to w not warn you, but put up the thing about, if you don't mind, about the Day of Miracles. Everybody that comes, we could either go get a truck and bring a bunch of chairs, or we could just ask you to bring your chairs. So I'm going to ask you to do that. Everybody that goes to this, whether you're working in it or you just show up, bring, bring some chairs to to sit on uh, so we don't because that would that, that would be a whole nother thing if we have to go move a bunch of chairs and please do us a how many of you have those chairs you just pull out and you can sit on you know like beach chairs bring beach chairs that way you know you have a place to sit they also have bleachers we're going to bring out and they have some bleachers that we could sit on too so uh, thank you just remember that because we won't meet next week for me to tell you but I'll watch your email and watch your phone because we'll be informing you okay God bless you. Thank you so much. Give Paul another hand for that word. That was awesome. And you are dismissed. If you need prayer, come on up here, though. We want to pray for you before you go.